Today's video has been made possible by The Great Courses Plus, an on-demand video learning service that gives you access to some of the best courses, lectures, and documentaries on a vast array of subjects. Stick around until the end to find out more about today's great offer. My first experience with the Book of Enoch was about three years ago when I first started making videos on Greek mythology. A comment that I'd see all the time was one telling me that the Greek deities were in fact fallen angels, and their children were Nephilim. This obviously made no sense to me because it isn't something ever mentioned or alluded to in Greek myth. It also didn't help that the people I saw quoting the Book of Enoch did so in the same incoherent manner, so it came across as not much more than gibberish, for lack of a better term. The blabbering of a crazy person who had just joined some weird New Age cult is what I assumed I was reading. Eventually, I was curious enough to do some of my own further reading into this mysterious book, and what I found was, at the very least, interesting. The Book of Enoch is essentially an ancient Hebrew religious text ascribed to Enoch, the great-grandfather of Noah. It's made up of several shorter books that discuss the origins of giants and demons, how the angels fell from grace, and why the Great Flood of Genesis was necessary. Despite the notion that the Book of Enoch helped form the worldview of Judaism and Christianity, neither recognize it as biblical canon. It is referenced, but never considered a work inspired by God. Others interpret this to mean the Book of Enoch was removed from the Bible, because it challenged beliefs and inspired ideas the Church had deemed as dangerous. Now as to which one of these is true, I'm sure it will be argued for thousands and thousands of years to come. In this video, I'd like to take a look at the first book, which focuses on the Fall of the Watchers, the angelic figures who betrayed God and created the Nephilim. The first book in the Book of Enoch is known as the Book of the Watchers. You can pretty much read these in whatever order you desire. The Book of the Watchers begins with Enoch being described as a righteous man, who has journeyed to the heavens and had his eyes opened by God. It then mentions a future where God shall come forth and tread upon the earth, all shall tremble in fear, and the watchers shall quake. This is referring to Judgment Day. All that is wicked on the earth shall perish, except for the righteous, who will be granted mercy and given God's blessing. The first few things we can take from this is that the watchers were mentioned separately from men, meaning they are more than human. They also have a reason to fear the judgment of God. It then goes on to say, God shall bring with him 10,000 of his holy ones to assist in this judgment. Some interpret this to mean an army of 10,000 angels, and others simply believe this refers to the judges of morality. The first five chapters discuss this judgment in some more detail, but it's chapter number six where we begin to hear about the story of the Watchers. So what exactly are they? As their name would suggest, the Watchers were tasked with watching over humanity and the Earth. They saw and heard everything. They were the messengers and middle ground between the Earth and Heaven. Everything that happened on Earth was seen and ordained by the Watchers on behalf of God. Given that description, it's not unreasonable to say the Watchers must have been angels, but they aren't described amongst God's most trusted angels. Enoch himself does refer to them as angels, and states that there were 200 Watchers, with only their leaders being named. So it's fair to say the Watchers may have been lesser angels, or some kind of holy being unknown to humanity. The conflict in this story begins when the Watchers abandon their duties. They watched over the children of men for years as they multiplied, and became obsessed with the beauty of their daughters. Eventually, they decided it was time to descend upon the earth and take mortal wives to bear their children. The leader of the Watchers, Samyaza, feared not all would agree with this idea, and the punishment for such a sin would fall solely on him. The ten chiefs of the Watchers all took an oath that meant they couldn't abandon this plan. The oath also bound them to one another, meaning any punishment would fall upon all of them. 
and so they abandoned their post and descended upon the earth, taking mortal wives. The chief watchers shared knowledge and secrets which were forbidden, teaching humanity all sorts of enchantments and charms. The children from this union between Watcher and Human were known as Nephilim, giants who were over 4,000 feet tall. The Nephilim were savage beings who man could not control. Eventually, the giants turned on them, roaming the land, pillaging and destroying everything in their path. A watcher known as Azazel taught humans how to make weapons and armor, and with this discovery came untold bloodshed amongst humanity. Enoch also describes the teaching of beautifying eyelids and costly stones. To me and you, that just means the watchers showed women what makeup and jewelry was, and as a result, they were more attractive to men. Long story short, the Watchers came to Earth and had some crazy giant children, shared some divine secrets, and encouraged behaviour that was previously seen as taboo. The Archangels Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel observe this lawless and unrighteous behaviour taking place, and decide they must act. They turn to God, who tells them he is aware of the situation, and he has a plan. This plan just happens to be the end of days. The only way to ensure the Nephilim do not continue to breed and destroy humanity is to destroy everything and start again. Each one of the Archangels is given a task of paramount importance. Uriel is sent to make sure Noah is aware of this plan so he can prepare and survive, as the task of repopulating the Earth will fall upon him. Raphael is sent to punish Azazel, to bind him and cast him into darkness. To be specific, he is asked to make an opening in the desert and throw Azazel in there, cover him in jagged rock so he may never see the light again, until the end of days when he is to be thrown into the fire, which will heal the earth of all the sin and corruption Azazel caused with the secrets he chose to share. Gabriel is given the task of destroying the children of the Watchers, as well as the children of men born from sin. He does so by inciting a great battle between the two. Lastly, Michael is told to bind the leader of the Watchers, Samyaza, along with all the other Watchers who defiled themselves in unions with mortals. They were to be bound in the valleys of the earth for 70 generations until the Day of Judgment. Chapter 12 onwards explains Enoch's participation in all of this. It states that he was hidden from the children of men who had no idea what had happened to him. His time away was spent with the Watchers and the Holy Ones. It was now his responsibility to mediate between the Watchers and those in heaven. Enoch tells the Watchers of God's plan, and they beg and plead with him to draw up a petition. Trembling in fear, they now seek forgiveness for their actions. When Enoch falls asleep, he has a dream with God's response. The petition is denied. The Watchers would not receive forgiveness, nor would they ever ascend to heaven again. The petition on behalf of their children would also be denied. They would have to watch as the Nephilim were killed right before them. Enoch continues to explain his dream describing the palaces of heaven and the reasons why the Watchers shall never receive redemption. The Watchers were blessed to live for eternity, but they defiled themselves with the flesh and blood of mortals. When the children of men were created, they lusted for blood and flesh, and so they were given wives. The angels were not meant to share these desires, and so they had no need for wives. Enoch then discusses a journey through Sheol, a dark place where the dead go, a sort of underworld. In this dark, fiery abyss, Uriel tells him this is the prison for the Watchers, the angels who dared to rebel against God and corrupt mankind. That is the fate they are destined to serve for eternity, and nothing they do will ever change this fate. The story of the Watchers, and even the name itself, appears in several other texts, such as the Second Book of Enoch and the Book of Giants. One of the most noticeable references was in Genesis, 
where you have the same story, but instead of the Watchers, the angels are referred to as the Sons of God. The Sons of God saw how beautiful the Daughters of Man had become, and took them as wives. However, this time their offspring were celebrated as heroes, and not demonised as monsters. The rest of the Book of Enoch does mention the Archangels in some more detail, and maybe we'll cover them along with the Nephilim in separate videos. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see. As we mentioned at the start of the video, it's sponsors like The Great Courses Plus that make this content possible. I'm sure at this point we're all pretty used to on-demand subscription services. Netflix, Disney Plus, and so on. The Great Courses Plus is fairly similar. But instead of feeling bad after binging 12 hours of an awful TV show out of boredom, you can be productive and learn something new. There is a vast catalogue of lectures, courses, and documentaries, taught by Ivy League professors and other fascinating individuals. The topics range from finance, fitness, food, and travel, to history, philosophy, science, and literature, so there should be something there to tickle everyone's fancy. You can stream The Great Courses Plus from your TV, tablet, laptop, or phone, whichever you prefer. If it's about space or dinosaurs, then I'm normally interested. But The Great Courses Plus does give me an extra resource when it comes to researching video ideas and coming up with new topics. If you enjoyed learning about the Book of Enoch, then there is an entire section devoted just to ancient religion. I'd recommend a pagan world, but there are dozens more to choose from. If that sounds good, you can start your free trial today by visiting thegreatcoursesplus.com slash mythology, or by simply clicking on the link in the description. So give it a try and let me know if you learn anything particularly interesting. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.